done with them. That's right. You're drawn by it. Do it. Yeah. Yeah. Do you learn patience or but, yeah, yeah. Goes to the next level. I have to say, he didn't think I understood. It was so hard to breathe.
Pastor Logan McLean Strike, and we are Florence United Church, Methodist Church, woo, uh, located here on the Oregon coast. Um, I'm so glad that you made it here today for many reasons. Um, number one being we have um, the opportunity to uh, break bread together at the communion table. Our gospel text today is the story of Jesus feeding the 5,000 in the desert, and it's thought that um, early Christian communities would read this when they would partake of communion together and remember that God meets us in unexpected places, even the desert, to meet us um, with joy and abundance and fill us to satisfaction. Uh, the flowers today are um, in honor of Maddie, a beloved dog of May and Bruce. And it was arranged by um, Aaron, of course. So thank you, Aaron. That's good. Very good. So as we enter into our worship today, let's just take a breath. Allow ourselves to be here. Let our thoughts quiet for a moment. Our hearts soften so that we might hear the voice of God. And I invite you to join me in our call to worship. God of our hopes and dreams, we are empty and we long to be filled. We are hungry and long to be fed. We are lost and long to be found. Gather us into your love and pick up the pieces of our lives. Just as Jesus gathered up the fragments of the five loaves and two fish, that remain after feeding the 5,000. Call us anew to eat our fill and to find our true nourishment in Jesus, the bread of heaven. Amen. Amen. And it's not very often that we get to do this, um, our prayer of confession. I think it's important for us to do this every once in a while, especially when we come to the table, because we have to remember that we are not perfect people. We are dependent upon, dependent upon our Creator God who sets us on a new path um, and renews our spirits when we are disappointed in the world or disappointed in ourselves. So I invite you to join me in this prayer of confession and um, you will have the bold print, so you won't see it for a little a few, a couple slides. So we come believing in our emptiness, believing that we will never have enough believing that what we have is unworthy. We come fearful of sharing, fearful of losing our tenuous grip on security, fearful of touching and knowing the pain of others. We come overwhelmed by the hunger, overwhelmed by the suffering of children near and far, overwhelmed by the endless tales of senseless violence, greed, and death. We come aching from the weight of the responsibility, aching from the chilling challenge of knowing our abundance, aching from the gnawing awareness that we have much to share. We come clinging to our meager lunches. So we ask you to bless, bless them and, and, and us, break them and us, share them. them. So know this, that in the name of Christ, any sins you carry within you this day, they are forgiven. May Almighty God strengthen you with the power through the Holy Spirit that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. 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 And I invite you to stand for our gathering song, A Place at the Table. Um, this is, I have to admit, this is a favorite of mine. So the choir has sang it, we've sang it a few times, and it's in your green hymnals if you want the tune in front of you. Place at the table.
choices when I feel most despairing. I'm sure I'm not alone in this. We all have patterns of behaving that make matters worse than better. So if I'm feeling particularly hopeless about the state of the world, for example, I sometimes will just stop reading the news. First, that feels really good, but then I end up being out of touch with the world, and that has a way of hurting, too. Sometimes I go the exact opposite direction. I'll read article after article about something that just makes my heart ache. 
And that too drags me into a pit of despair. Those are two bad options. Ignore bad news and the injustice others face, or pay too close attention to it. What if there were a third way? A way that led to genuine hope and thriving even amidst a world of hurt and suffering. I found this quote of Mr. Rogers, and I think this is the best remedy when we feel most hopeless. Look for the helpers. You will always find people who are helping. So as we encounter this story in Matthew, Jesus feeding the 5,000 along with the disciples, we enter into this story of despair on multiple levels, but we also find people that are helping. Namely, Jesus, whose ministry is rooted in compassion and starts with him when there's nothing but despair at first. We find Jesus, his disciples, and a hungry crowd of 5,000, which doesn't include the count of women and children. You might have caught that right at the end of the meeting. Women don't count. Maybe we could at least triple that count and say that for every man there was at least one woman and one child, and that, that makes the count at least 15,000. That is an overwhelming number of hungry people. <clears throat> But that's not the only thing either. They are in a desert. And wait, there's more. Night is falling. There are no businesses nearby. And that's not even the worst of it yet. This comes after um, Jesus and his friends were traveling and experiencing deep heartache because they had just heard that John the Baptist had been beheaded by Herod. So when... Jesus, at the beginning of the text, that Jesus withdrew from his homeland and went in a boat to a deserted place. He was withdrawing because he had just heard this terrible news. And the disciples, who I imagine to be tired on a soul level by these realities of death, sadness, poverty, desperation, as well as their own individual grief and needs, they come to Jesus and they say, it's time to send these people away. There's... There's nothing we can do. They don't want to be the people helping because they desperately need a respite from the suffering. And who can blame them? They could, they could not see Jesus in all their despairing as the Son of God, as this miracle worker, as this maker of a way out of no way. And I am wishing that in our service today, I had included Psalm 78. It would have made a great companion text to Matthew, um, Matthew's account of Jesus' compassion here in the desert. Because in this psalm, the rebellious, unbelieving hearts of um, the people of God speak against God, and they say, can God spread a table in the wilderness? Even though God struck the rock so that water gushed out and torrents overflowed, can he also give bread or provide meat for his people? With their words, the disciples answer that question with a no. The task is too grand. Jesus cannot feed people in the desert with, with nothing, even though there were loaves of bread and fish. The task is just too grand. And their hearts are too heavy. It's time to be real and just give up. But Jesus responds saying, They need not go away. You give them something to eat. And so they argue. I can imagine myself doing the same. And they say, but Don't you see? We have little. We have next to nothing. But Jesus doesn't heed them and instructs them to go ahead and bring the crowds to him. And the scripture, I, I would love more information, but the scripture doesn't give us much details about what, what happens next, how these loaves multiply. We are only told that there is little food and then there is abundance, as the blessed and broken bread is shared. There is more to be said about what Jesus does. He first looks to heaven. He honors God, the place where God dwells, hallowing God's name, just as he had taught the disciples to pray. 
Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. And you might remember that Jesus' first temptation in the wilderness was to declare independence from God. But here, before feeding the 5,000, he declares dependence, remembering God. And only after this, after looking to heaven, Jesus blesses the bread, which um, is not a magical ritual where Jesus gives the bread something it didn't have before. Um, to bless something is to express praise to God, the one who brings forth food from the earth. And again, Jesus is actually pointing to this reality that all things depend upon God. And you can hear the echoes of the Lord's Prayer again. Give us today our daily. And because Jesus recognizes that while we might not live on bread alone, without bread, we cannot live. And with that, after all this looking to heaven, he looks out on the crowd with that lens of the kingdom of heaven and looks with love upon the crowds that are gathered before him. And so with that, there's this crashing of heaven and earth where we see the world through the lens of the kingdom of God coming to and there's a sense that all bread is the bread of heaven. And Jesus bears witness to the fact that while the bread is the product of the earth, bread also comes to us as somehow a gift, too. A gift from God alone. And with that, our ordinary moment of just coming before um, one another to eat, our presence of God, uh, the presence of God expands from this place of inaccessibility, God somewhere off in heaven on this other plane to this tangible reality, being there with the bread, this bread that comes from God. So what else can God do with ordinary things? If Jesus can meet the very real needs of people with compassion in the wilderness, the physical and emotional location of despair, deep despair, is there any place that is not, that is truly hopeless? Is there any place that is truly hopeless? In Ephesians it reads this. This is one of my favorite texts. And Paul speaks to the church there and says, I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, may have power together with all God's holy people, to grasp how wide, how long, how deep, how wide is the love of Christ. And to know that this love that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled to the measure of the fullness of God. <clears throat> Jesus reminds us and invites us, invites you, to remember the boundless compassion of Christ. The kind of love that beckons you to not build higher walls between you and your neighbor, but to extend your table. Jesus shows you that, yes, God can and does spread a table in the desert. So where is your desert today? Where would Jesus meet you? And which of Jesus' followers is there somehow to ready to help in your desert. God is here. Hope is yours. And there is enough to go around. Amen. 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 We will sing, um, You Satisfy the Hungry Heart, number 629 in your red hymnal.
now to a special uh, moment in our service. We are going to have um, uh, representatives from the United Women of Faith uh, come forward for a special pin ceremony for special servants of the church. So I'll invite Sharon and Renee forward. As we all know, this church is so full of giving, caring people that all give so much in their own way. Uh, United Methodist women have uh, some very special ladies and gentlemen supporting them. And today we'd like to give <coughs> special recognition just to a couple of them. Uh, First, we have a couple in this church that have worked and worked so hard through this time of COVID, <clears throat> getting the church looking beautiful, getting the parsonage looking beautiful, and we would like to ask Scott and Vicki to please come forward. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> These people, one of the little things they did was move about 7,000 pounds of turf into the front yard of the parsonage to make it look beautiful yeah. over there. Um, well, if you can imagine 7,000 pounds of butter, then you know how much space it would take. <laughs> and we've all seen them working to beautify the, the uh, kitchen. Uh, kitchen. Whatever that room is over there. I can never decide what, what room. Fellowship Hall. Uh, and of course, they're instrumental in the, the uh, food program here, giving uh, lunches to people twice a week and making sure that they have um, free services of food, of showers, of laundry, and uh, I don't know of two people in this church who have done more over the last few years than these two people. Thank you so much. And the other person that we need to look toward today has also given so much to this church in so many ways. She is such a leader. She's leader of United Methodist Women. She organizes so many things, the last of which was our very successful uh, rummage sale. Not rum, sorry, that's coming up. She's still organizing that one. Um, the successful uh, Sales. Tea, high tea, thank you. And uh, so we'd like to ask Judy to please come forward. giving uh, for the, the, the district, but also uh, some of these were donated by um, Eleanor's daughter and um, and the one that the girls got was was yeah. from Eleanor. Oh. <laughs> yeah. So we missed very much. Did you want to have any comments? I'll start with that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> So this is just a tiny thank you to these exceptional people. Mm -hmm. yeah. and, uh, we didn't want to pin them on because it's kind of like threading a needle. So they're so, so very small. Just one thing, United Methodist Women is now United Women in Faith and we're open to everybody. So come join us. Thank you. Yay. 
it's really beautiful um, to see all the ways that each and every one of you give back to this community, whether it's cleaning up the computers or old papers uh, or setting up um, ice cream and hot dogs later. There's so many ways that we love on each other and give back. So thank you all, and especially Scott and Vicki and Renee, I mean, and Judy. Judy, thank you. Okay, so let's turn now to song. Um, Lord, listen to your children praying. Let's sing it three times through before entering prayer. Tuesday, August 8th from 6 to 7.30 in the Fellowship Hall, so please um, uh, be aware of that and come as you are able and willing. Um, our last plastic collection is Saturday, August 19th from 10 to 2, and uh, the location is still to be determined, so contact Nancy Rhodes if you would like more information. And the UWF annual rummage sale is coming up August 26th. So, um, so mark your calendars for all these exciting things that are going on. And um, one other announcement that I'm going to invite um, Jim and um, Kathy Ford for from the governing board and SPRC. Yes. So I'm going to share something with you that the church council has been discussing and grappling with for a while. We've had part-time pastors uh, now for quite a few years, as you know, most of you know. And frankly, they worked uh, a lot more than half time, didn't they? <laughs> yes, they did. They were retired, they chose to do so, but it set somewhat of an unrealistic precedent and expectation for our congregation. And we just happen to now have a younger pastor and who's also working another part-time job as the chaplain of the hospital. And we need to reduce the load that she's been carrying as our half-time pastor. So uh, what we want to say is that doing this will be a process, not just, not just sort of something we magically wave our hands and it happens. Uh, we have, for example, we have uh, asked her to track her time and see what responsibilities can be <laughs> taken on by us. Aha. Uh -huh. <laughs> yes. We have also for now reduced her preaching and worship leading responsibilities by one Sunday per month. So that, that's an important part of this announcement. So let me speak candidly for myself. This kind of situation can bring out the worst in me. 
human nature being what it is, it would be easier to think or to say, well, if she isn't going to be here on that Sunday, then I'll just, I won't care as much, I won't come as much, I won't give as much. <coughs> None of you are like me. <laughs> and what I have to say is, hey, Jim, snap out of it. We have a part-time pastor. Deal with it. I am really glad that Logan is our pastor. And I hope you will join me in continuing to give of yourself to our life together as we move forward in our life together for the good of the community and the world. Amen. I'm not just, I'm, I mean that, okay. Uh, and as the SPRC chair, go figure, how did I end up with that? Uh, I would be glad to talk with you about this if you would like to. Of course, you could also talk to Kathy Yelly. <laughs> Thank you very much, Jim. Um, I, it's hard to have to follow. I just want to reiterate uh, that I feel that our community of faith is so blessed by having Pastor Logan here and everything that she adds to our faith community and to the broader community in Florence, as well as being lucky to have past, Pastor Paul as an adjunct, so to speak. That's my husband, I believe. <laughs> oh, was that who he yeah. is? Yeah. <laughs> so, um, you know, I, I'm glad that the board is taking on the issue of making sure that Pastor Logan has a good life-work balance because we want her to stay for a long time. Yeah. And I'm also... Until she uh, retires. <laughs> And I also want to recognize um, how blessed we are as a community of faith, how strong we are, and um, how loving, caring, and um, just full of talent. So I look forward to kind of reimagining our service a little bit on those days in which Pastor Logan will be taking a respite from being in the pulpit. So it's a challenge to all of you to think about how that will work. And as Jim said, if you would like to have questions or would like to discuss things, he would be happy to discuss with you, and so would I or any of the other governing board members. So. Just as a point, in case we don't all know, what does SPRC stand for? <laughs> uh, Staff Parish Relations Committee. Mm -hmm. So um, there are two members of the committee now, Amanda Sarles, who was unable to come today, and Jim Water. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all so much. And I'll say something really quick before you, Susie. Um, I, this is something that I've wanted to um, do for a while, but I've been putting it off ever since I started here, just for the simple fact that I love being in worship with you. Um, I look forward to it every Sunday, and so, um, but the, the potential we have for me to be able to shift my hours a little bit and be present in other ways in the community really excites me too. So, um, so just know that uh, my door is open to all of you if you have questions or concerns. Um, and I too am looking forward to what we come up with. Um, for those uh, those extra Sundays where I'm not actually in the pulpit preaching because it's an opportunity for us to think about what do we love about worship? What do we want to try? What are we curious about? Um, and I think we're good at that already. So um, so I look forward to what we what we will do in the future. So thank you. Okay, and Susie raised her hand. <laughs> I just have one um, announcement, and thank you and Kathy and all of you guys for doing what you do for the whole church. Uh, but speaking of the whole community, um, and I'm glad for you, we'll miss you the one-fourth of a time or whatever that is, but um, the first song about justice, and um, that really touched home when the first verse said about um, everyone should have shelter, there's a really important um, city council meeting tomorrow night, and I don't know if you, 5.30. If, if you can come, great. If you want to speak, even better. But if you haven't read last uh, Friday's paper, I think it's online too, it gives you lots of details. Or you can go to um, City of Florence, and just you can just Google it, City of Florence, and when you get to 
the information about the calendar and about what's happening tomorrow night has a lot more information for you. And what's happening is they're going to vote on about our homeless. And I, a lot of people here um, donate their time and volunteer and so appreciate, like, for the cold weather emergency shelter. And there's a chance with the governor having emergency money to help the horrific homeless problem that we have throughout the country and the state. Um, there's 500,000 that we can access, but it's got to be quick because this is going to start right now. It's a certain amount of time that we have to apply for it and do it. So I know a lot of people are saying they need more time for public input, but really um, tomorrow night will be it and the time in between then. So I guess what I'm asking you is please, you know, if you can, go home and go online and pull up the city of Florence and find out more information for yourself. There's a great idea they've gotten from our neighbor Coos Bay of how they've handled it and what they've done to help permanent folks helping out permanent shelter in the north end of town, kind of near Freddy's. Um, and because we've got to move out of the cold weather shelter area. I know that's a lot of information to throw at you and it probably doesn't make a lot of sense. Yeah. But if you look it up or look at the paper um, or go by the library after church and they have the paper there if you don't get it, um, I'd be so appreciated to give your two cents in it. Just send an email or go, go in person, either one would just be awesome to help them decide to vote. Yes, please to take advantage of this great opportunity we have to help the homeless and consequently to everybody. So great. sorry that went on a while. Oh, City Council, 5.30 tomorrow. Thank you. Um, and Vicki, yeah. there, there was a, you know, a group that is really opposed to, to having a shelter and they mm -hmm. raised uh, so many questions that what the City Council did was they said we're not going to consider it tomorrow. They're having a special meeting on August 14th at Ford's Events Center. You know, just, just okay. to uh, discuss that. Mm -hmm. But yes, if people can go to that. You can certainly, you know, write letters. And, uh, you know, like, like Susie was saying, this is a big opportunity for this community. We have experienced people going to run it. And, uh, mm -hmm. uh, you know, but, you know, the money's going to go away if we don't have it. Great. Okay. Thanks for that. Update. Well, thank you for amplifying that. Um, another uh, quick announcement, uh, so for those of you that use Amplify Media, we had to um, cancel one of our cards and order a new one, and so that meant that some of our payments weren't paid um, immediately, so we don't have Amplify Media for this month right now. So if, you're, if you've been trying to use that, just know that we'll let you know, we'll send out an email when we get that up and running again. And um, since we talked about anniversaries, uh, Bert and Linda and uh, Rosie and Butch, we also have a birthday in the house, Karen Bayless. <laughs> so she deserves an extra scoop of ice cream today. Yay. Yay. And happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. for today, I think. Um, receive the benediction as you go. May God bless you and keep you. May God's face shine on you and be gracious unto you. May God look upon you with favor and grant you peace. Amen. Our sending song is God be with you till we meet again. Just one verse so we can get to those hot dogs. <laughs> So I invite you to stand as you are able.
都是 p o 